Welcome back to the Command Stack. Today we have with us myself, John. I'm Ken. I'm Garrett. And I'm Ryan. And today we're going to be talking about lead up to Worlds and how to prepare for a major event because Worlds is going to be the most major event that we have going on. Um, so we're going to start out, though, with some news. So I'm going to kick it over to Garrett. All right, everybody. Hope everyone's doing okay. We got Worlds coming up. It's going to be uh, next, not next week, but uh, yeah, next week. Sorry. Wednesday, the 22nd. Uh, but the games will start kicking off on the 23rd. So that's Thursday, and that's going to be the last chance qualifier. Now, we are excited. If you didn't see the announcement video, uh, we will be, I on radio, that is, we'll be streaming uh, the tables. Um, so at last chance qualifier, uh, we're going to be hanging out, and we're, we're going to have an awesome setup, and we'll be filming, you know, uh, what we find to be the most interesting that day. Uh, probably do the top table at the end. Uh, we don't want to have a lot of, repeats of fleets especially for the last chance qualifier and and then you know friday saturday sunday we get into the big stuff so come say hi uh, you'll definitely notice us there uh, it'll be ken and i mostly uh, as john and ryan will be competing and then uh also some some news the prizes for the world championship got dropped um those look pretty awesome a lot of cool alt arts um, acrylic temple trays, uh, tokens and such. And I think damage decks are going out to a lot of the people who participate. So that stuff all looked really great, um, provided by AMG. And then, uh, if you have not grabbed a ticket and you still want to come to Adepticon, you're going to have to do it at the door now for the events. Uh, it's really important. Can't get online anymore. So you just have to show up and get them. Uh, there's lots of side events, sector fleets, um, SUMA events, uh, and then just general open armada play. Yeah, I um, I'm gonna interject. I think they oh, have a suma going on during all of the events, like as a side side table. You could come over and you can play uh, suma. So those tickets you kind of can just pick up from the uh, the vendor. Awesome. And then I also wanted to mention while we're streaming, you will be able to uh, live chat with us and we'll be able to see what you ask. So if you have questions or just want to like feel like you're a part of the event and you can't come, I will definitely be there checking things out and uh, responding when we can to appropriate things. Um, and then, of course, I think the most exciting thing after Worlds we've got is in a recent interview, AMG's uh, Will Sick tease that RR2 is on its way. Um, so I'm really excited to see what they release for that, as I am always craving new content. Uh, but that's all I got for news. You guys have anything else you want to add? No. No. Um, right. I, I think uh, with the possibility of rapid reinforcements too, we want to uh, do an episode on that later on. But we already have a very full episode today of preparing for worlds and things like that. So it will be a topic for another episode. So, okay. So let's go into preparing for a big event. Um, how many big events have you guys all gone to and had to prepare for? Oh, we'll just go around. Ken, how many uh, major events have you gone to? Are we talking about where I've been competing or just major events where I've gone to? Um, well, that's a good question. Let's just talk about major events related directly to Armada. Well, in that case, it's been two for me, uh, with Gen Con last year being probably the biggest. I think the big, most important thing that I'm going to tell people is make sure you get your sleep. Uh, take a shower in the morning, take your time, do your morning ritual. You know, if you shave, shave. If not, you know, trim your beard. Uh, make sure you're in the right mental mind space. Because uh, especially for something like Worlds, where you have four full days. Of, well, if you go through the LCQ, you'll have four. But you're going to have three potential days of Armada. You want to make sure that when you wake up in the morning, you've got your breakfast, your mind is ready to go so that when you get to the tables, you're not you know, a mess. You, if you're up until four o'clock in the morning, you're probably not going to play Armada very well that next day. Uh, definitely stay hydrated, stuff like that. That's what I would do. Um, and then just make sure before you leave that you double check that you have every component you need for your fleet. So make sure you've got your, your uh, command dials, that you have, 
your uh, speed dials, that you have whatever rulers you need. And then, of course, the most important thing is make sure that you have shifts. And if you think you might make a change at the con, make sure you bring those ships too. Because I made that mistake at Gen Con where I was debating between two types of fleets and I figured I'd just be able to buy that extra MC-30 at Gen Con. Didn't happen. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I'm going to kick the question over to Garrett. Um, question being, um, how many major events have you had to prepare for? So I've been to four major Armada ones, Gen Con twice and Nova Open twice. All of them were really fun. I got to say, uh, for somebody like me, I got a really irregular sleep pattern because of my uh, tater job. But I train yourself uh, to be able to wake up early and then go to bed early up before the event. Um because, you know, usually things start off at, like, 8 a.m., so you got to be a get-up at 6 a.m. Um, and then I always like to bring uh, you know, ibuprofen, et cetera, because I get headaches throughout the day. A lot of standing, a lot of talking, a lot of thinking. And then, obviously, water uh, snack bars, um, like cliff bars, or, like, whatever, nutri grain, whatever floats your boat, just to, to eat in, the, in between rounds. Um, and then if you're carrying a lot of stuff, uh, and if you don't have a really good bag, uh, I recommend checking out tackle bags. Uh, at like Bass Pro Shop or Walmart or whatever, they usually got a lot of space and they got a lot of pockets to easily carry things around. So uh, that's uh, that's my advice. What do you got, Ryan? Um, well, I've been to Gen Con twice and Depth Con and a couple of regionals. And Gary, you've been to some regionals too, right? Oh yeah, I didn't know if those count. Yeah, I think they count. I, I think they count. They, They're full days. They, in the olden days, we had regionals, um, and so the prize. I, I couldn't agree more with the Excedrin. I get, you know, long days and the bright lights. I'll get, I'll get headaches and, um, you know, no one wants to hear it, but, you know, bring your deodorant, make sure you pack that, you know, just be courteous, be courteous to your fellow players. You know, it's, it's a lot of, a lot of people in the, in the, in the, in the hall. Yeah, there's uh, no shame to sweating after standing for eight hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's no shame. Um, in terms of like preparing for the actual games, I like, you know, practice, just practice, um, and not just against people, but just play as many games in your head as you think, you know, you can play deployment, you can play the first round in your head and just see where you can go. And, you know, that's, that's just as valuable, you know, go over different objectives, um, you know, look, review, um, listen to podcasts and, you know, where they talk about uh, what fleets did well. I, that's been my big thing. Listen to podcasts, listening, listening to in various interviews or, um, listening to the top top fleets that are get flown or what objectives are taken just to kind of you know think about the, the what's being played and then ultimately you want to be fresh you you're gonna be grinding you know if you're doing well you're gonna be grinding for three day, days of Armada um, so you, so you want to be fresh in terms of what I bring um, I am old school I don't uh, you know I don't have a tater uh, a whole tater box system um, I like my original, Armada box that I that my original core set that I have that I have duct taped and I'm very proud of it. It's looking uh, ripe. It has my <laughs> name on it. It's uh, you'll see it if you go to Worlds and you can you can you know take a picture with it if you if you'd like. But uh, that's that's what I bring. Okay, so myself, I've been to. This will be my second time at Adepticon. I've been to Gen Con twice. I've been to LVO once. I've been to Nova once. I've been to Indy Regional t two or three times. I've been to Chicago Regionals three times. So I've done a lot of uh, major events. Um, so my next question to follow up what events that we have gone to is how did we have to travel there? So I have had to both drive drive out of town and i've also had to fly to events and i think that changes how you prepare so so how did you guys end up traveling to your major events because that takes um a different perspective on how to get there so uh, Ken, car. Did you guys drive there driven car. So, um Same so taking that into account is different how because some people have to then check their equipment into like do you take it on as a carry-on or do you or would you like put it into um carry on with you like how would you get your armada stuff and i found in the past that the container that i have i fit into my suitcase and then i just pack my clothes around it 
to kind of cushion it so <laughs> to protect my my ships as I go on to the flight. Yeah, I will say I've driven, I've flipped, I've flown with minis before. Uh, as best as you can do. I mean, there's always going to be accidents. Bring super glue. Yes, that that's another good thing to keep in mind. Um, so, when you guys get set up to go to a tournament um, and you have your list, um, is there any specific way that you guys check? and make sure you have all of your things with you or um, verify that you have cards and tokens. Like how is your travel setup set up then? I, l I lay it all out. That's how I, that's how I check. I, I kind of like lay my fleet out as if I was at a table just to kind of go over it, look through it and, and, and then pack it up. Do you guys, do the same. do you guys bring any extras with you? I bring an extra damage deck. I'm always worried about not having the right number of damage deck cards, so I, I count. I also count those. I'm, I'm a little paranoid that I'll like I won't have 52 damage damage cards or something. Yeah. Same thing here. I bring a lot of extras of everything: um, dice, uh, <clears throat> dials, um, t templates. Uh, usually, don't bring extra ships, but I will bring extra bases uh, in case something breaks. But I don't just do it for me. I do it for other players too. Right? You never know when you're going to have to help a buddy out. Yeah, I think that's one of the big things if you were local versus um, traveling out of town, because when you're traveling out of town, it's very difficult to pack like your whole collection. And when you're playing locally, a lot of times people will show up with their whole binder. So if you accidentally forgot a card or specifically people, a lot of times will forget their objective cards. Like that's something that you have to make sure that you pack because it's a requirement for submitting a fleet is having all of your objective cards and you can pull it then from other people. Um, and then for lists, a lot of p times you can submit lists online and then to have a copy. Um, I don't know what you guys do, but I always print a copy of my list that I hand into the TO. So that has my objectives on it. I have an additional copy of that. So then I have it on my person so I can be like, yep, this is the official list I'm running. And then however many rounds the game is, I print a list for each round so that I can just hand it to my opponent. I don't have to worry about trying to get it back. If they take it, they take it. It's whatever. So then that information is there for them. And I think um, for me, um, it's always frustrating when you're at a major tournament and someone's like, oh, here's my list. And they hand you like a just a scratch piece of paper with stuff jotted out and scratched out on it. I'm like, I don't even know what you actually have on your fleet. Um, do you guys do anything with that, with list preparing? I do the exact same thing you do, and I didn't realize that's how you did it. So it's actually <laughs> kind of funny for me. Same thing. I just print them out. Just print out stack. I like to write it out. Big Big fan of that. Oh, so you're you're the type of person I dread facing. <laughs> he pulls it crumpled out of his core box. Suck yeah, it some the core box keeps everything safe. You know, I don't lose anything in the core box. Big fan of that. Um, oh, I also wanted to say allergy pills, everybody. If you have allergies, allergy pills. Don't forget them. Yeah. Um, and then for being at a long tournament, um, a lot of times, like if you're playing a four round tournament of Ramada, each round is, I believe, like two hours and 15 minutes. Is that correct? So mm -hmm. you start adding that up over the course of the day. So you will be playing the game for, what is that, nine hours without any breaks. So your day is probably going to be 12 hours long. So it's really important to be prepared for that and to um, come with that in mind. Um, so make sure you have like, good pair of shoes and you're going to be standing personally i sit down every single second that i'm not required to stand so i put my stuff on the floor under the table and then I, i'm just sitting and if i don't need to stand don't stand because it's just so much so much uh wear and tear on your feet so good pair of shoes is there anything else that you guys would suggest for a long session I've I've heard this um, compression socks. I don't know if that's a myth or, or whatnot, but I've I've heard that that can help and that that might be a competitive advantage with compression socks. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, you might want to go buy some, but I've I've heard that actually helps. 
So do insoles, like quality insoles for the shoes you bring. Makes standing a lot better. Yeah. Um, another thing I've heard, I've never actually seen someone do it, but I've I've heard it. You know those um, long-term standing pads that you can buy? Um, someone would bring it and bust it out of like almost like a, a sack that up? they would have like a map in <laughs> so that they could stand on it. And um, I know personally, I have one when Ken and I are recording because in essence, we do a tournament every time we record. <laughs> So uh, a lot of those preparations that we have to do, um, we have to do when we're recording, recording the, on the channel. So I, I stand on that. Um, I don't wear good shoes. I wear slippers because I'm an old man at home. But um, that's something to take. Into I can't account. recommend them enough. Standing mats have changed my life. <laughs> so uh, would you ever? Well, I need to get a standing mat and bring it to the studio now, right, John? So <laughs> yeah, yeah, get them. I also have those uh, foam tiles that we could, we could. I keep trying, forgetting to put them over on, on on your side, but we should do that next time as well. Um, any other thoughts of things that you need to think about or prepare for a major event? That's it. Just remember. Oh, if you got a caffeine addiction like I do, make sure you pack some extra caffeine, whatever form you want. It's a long time to get a headache. <laughs> yes it is um, know when your brakes are done that's yes. uh don't miss because you're waiting in a in line at a food truck or something yeah, yeah. just just uh, remember that yes timing the brakes is important and um because it's such a long day everything's on a very tight schedule so that's why i believe um garrett mentioned bringing like granola bars or power bars and one of the things that's good about that is that can just be a snack to keep you going because a lot of times you'll get one break and it tends to be toward the beginning of the tournament like you play one round take a break and then you do the rest of the three straight and that's a haul to try to get three games done in a row without taking any any major breaks it's worth noting though that for adapticon It'll be two rounds, then a lunch break, and then two rounds. The exception being day three, I think the lunch break is actually after the second round? I think so. I think they want to end the day at like four o'clock. It has to be over at four, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. So are you guys, well, it's mainly, I guess, then for um, Ryan and myself. Do we have any things that we're going to be taking into consideration for preparing um, to compete in Worlds on day one, or does anyone that's taking um, the last chance qualifier, what would your biggest suggestion be for them to prepare? Can you can you flesh out like what do you mean, what do you mean exactly? Like do you, prepare, do you have like... any um, last last uh, like this is something you should remember to do before doing the last chance or world? If you could give them one major tip. <laughs> Um, I would just say, like, just, just prepare yourself for the possibility that you could lose and just, you know, just, just reflect that that's okay. Like, they're all good players that you're going to play against. There's no shame in losing to anybody. Like, it doesn't mean anything. Like, you're still the same person that you went in, you know, it does you know, this is not some reflection on who you are or anything if you lose. So just be okay with that and treat your opponent, uh, how you would want to be treated, you know, like just let's let's be a good community and that would be that would be my thing you know let's have fun and and try to keep trying to grow the game yeah i, I would agree with that that that's a great point okay so let's now jump into what type of fleets and what type of meta we expect to be at worlds um we've covered a lot of things on the command stack over the course of the last year and we've seen metas shift back and forth so um, is there any specific things that you guys think will be there or will not be there? Who's starting off here? Ken, you first. I, I, I don't think we're going to see um, Tag and Director Izard uh, <laughs> on a fleet. Uh, but, you know, I, I think we're going to see a lot of interesting mixes, though. Uh, because look at all the different metas that are going to come together at Adepticon, and especially with competitors that have been looking for this for the last three years 
I, I think we are actually going to get a true representation of all the worldwide metas thrust into these four days worth of gaming because we've got folks coming from all over the world. Yep. Right. Uh, double die bombers. We're going to see or, or double die squads where with anti ship, we're going to see so many of them. We're in the middle of a tank meta and we're going to, we're going to, there's going to be so many squad players. They're going to want a way to punch through. So I, I, I kind of think maybe, you know, if, because we're going to see so many double die bombers and squads, maybe if you're between, hey, do I bring a bomber or a heavy bomber or more of an anti squad? You know, if you're kind of between the last squad, maybe bring that anti squad, get that edge, get that that small little edge in the meta, uh, because I really it's going to be super squad heavy. Um, you can it's always reliable that you're going to at worlds you're going to get a super squad heavy meta um, and you know, punish those, those bombers is kind of my, my prediction. Jared, how about yourself? And I think I'm going to, you're going to see a lot of, uh, and this goes for the two Clone Wars factions, a lot of projection expert thermal shield, uh, spam. Um, you're going to have to, especially if you're bringing a list like a Onager or Starhawk, those thermals are going to really mess you up. And there's specific fleets built just to counter you, right? Luminara with the GAR are just going to keep flipping those defense tokens back. And, uh, but, you know, I think you're going to see a lot of, obviously, Martuk um, with Patriot's Fist with either hard cells or Munificence backing them up. Um, that's going to be a lot to deal with. You got to be prepared how you're going to mitigate, you know, just getting plinked to death by Martuk Red, know how to manage your shields. Uh, and I think you're going to see a ton of um, Sloan. Honestly, it's still very good. And this is a this is a serious competition, and people are here to win. And, and Sloan can really mess up your day uh, if, they, if they get that, you know, unobstructed, uh, unengaged alpha on your ships. And then I think you're going to see if you have the the chance to play against some of the really really good players out there who are going to bring, you know, these interdictor, you know, call Sam out, uh, interdictor on your list or something, <laughs> right? That's he's all about controlling your speed so you have no agency over how you're going to fly and he's going to put you exactly where he wants you he's going to make sure your ships land in his arcs um but uh yeah i mean i think you're going to see uh i don't want to take all the ideas what about you john um so i'm just going to segue into kind of what um you and uh ryan were saying is um we kind of came up with like four fleet archetypes that we're going to talk about and um just kind of what we feel like most metas can fit into this little tiny box um so the types are a farming lists um tank lists msu lists and dps lists so um let's touch on because you're you were already talking about it tank tank list how would you define a list being a tank fleet or sorry, let's actually start with farming lists first. Ugh. Let's start with farming farming fleets first. How would you define a farming fleet, and what type of fleets do you see with that? Who's taking this? I'm Can taking it Ryan back to you, Garrett. Taking it me. All yeah, right, I'll take it. The, oh, he's taking. All right, all right. We'll let Ryan go. All right. Um, so, farming is more diverse than than you would necessarily think. It can be second player. You know, where you're obviously going for objective points, right? Um, and there's you're looking at Firelane, sensor net. Um, it can also so you, so you're looking at Starhawk fleets. Generally speaking, you're also looking at um, a lot of MSU fleets are ironically farming fleets because what are they doing? They're grabbing their capture that VIP token and they're running. Um, that's farming, you know. Whether you want to think of it as, as or not, but you know you're not um, you're, you're you're grabbing the token and running a lot of uh fighter fleets are farming fleets right they're going to have the, the classic fighter objectives of precision strike fighter ambush superior positions and what are they going to do they're going to farm you they're going to they're going to plink you to death and 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 score a ton of points with those far, fighter farming objectives and so um you, that's kind of what i i think you can expect and it's nothing new to armada it's something you gotta you gotta mm -hmm. be uh, gotta be ready for yeah, I, I think I would define it like how you were, that it's a fleet that is designed to play a second player 
to make it so that if you can't kill them, they just win by gaining tokens. Um, so almost anything can be a farming list, but like there are specific lists that just excel at it very, very well. I think um, on the rebel side, you have the MSU that want to farm tokens from like um, migration, um, hyperspace migration, and um, then you have abandoned mining facility or even like a contested outpost of like my ship's not killable unless you kill me. And if you don't kill me, I get 120 points. Like that's designed to farm. And I think all factions can fall into it. And it's something to be aware of. Agreed. Agreed. All right. What's next? What do we got? Okay. So our next fleet is um, tank fleet. So I'll kick it back to you, um, Garrett, because you were talking about uh, tank stuff. Tank fleets. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyways, like I was saying, you know, a good example is uh, GAR um, with a couple Peltas with projection experts shooting shields, a Tranquility Venator. Um, you're going to be shooting that ship turn after turn, and it's going to keep churning shields back, um, pulling them off those Peltas, and then using the engineering command on themselves. Um, or like, you know, uh, with the CIS, uh, the dreaded Watt Tambor on a, uh, a Providence, or even just a Beneficent, right? You know. He's gaining up to 10 engineering points using all the shenanigans, and he's going to keep recovering shields. And their whole point is to put a ship and make it a target you can't resist or just the only target you can shoot uh, to where all their ships are just, you know, mitigating all the damage you can send to it while they accomplish whatever farming objective they had or um, if they've got a, a most wanted and they're just trying to blow up one of your ships, right? Um, and then, you know, for the Empire, it's this interdictor-type list uh, are really good for tanks. Um, and I think one of those lists actually won the last Nova. Uh, it was an interdictor tank. But, and then, you know, and then with the Rebels, uh, uh, you know, I guess it, it's kind of also that that farm hawk uh, where it's got it's Agate, Agate, right? Whale yeah. ballistics. It's, it's Agate. And then, oh, uh, and then, you know, it's, you can just keep shooting and shooting and shooting. But, you know, I mean, that's, that's really tank lists. And the whole point is to either delay action and score those uh, victory points or destroy whatever ship they need to and then uh, run away. But I will say, like, specifically, the CIS are in a beautiful position where they can throw an absolute massive amount of damage at you, but also tank it all um, with that Watambar officer. Um, so there's some factions that are better at it than others. You guys have any other thoughts? Uh, this is, you know, we, we saw tank fleets at the 2019 Worlds, you know, the last Worlds, which was, um, it, and it surprised it, it, it placed very well. It, this was the Star Destroyer with the Gladiator projection experts, the Seventh Fleet that, mm -hmm. that Mac ran, and I think Norm ran as well. Um, these are fleets that are proven to do well at Worlds, so you're going to see them. Yeah, I guess I'll add that. Like, you can have an ISD that's got ESTs, uh, PIDX, ECMs, and then if it's got a support interdictor, that's, that's I mean, that's a really tanky ISD. It's going to they're just canceling your damage. Rerolling your stuff, targeting scramblers. Yeah. Uh, to go back to what Ryan just said about that fleet is the amount of damage that it could cancel out. Um, it was just insane because a lot of times the officer for that would be Nita on the ISD. So you're like canceling a dice at long range and then um, you can brace it down and then your seventh fleet is shoving it to the side and i believe a lot of times it played with um early warning system so that it yeah. would also be obstructed so like mm -hmm. your long range dice even on like a let's just say cr90 right so your two red dice go down to one dice you can fire in you trc it they cancel it with the evade and then um seventh fleet just makes the whatever is left get down to zero and you, your shot didn't even matter and they've only used like one defense token <laughs> It, it's it's pretty pretty crazy how um, much damage can just be mitigated so fast. Um, I think something that uh, Ken and I realized when we were playing um, the This Is Madness series is that there were a lot of tank focused fleets in in that. Do you have um, anything on that, Ken, from uh, any of the Madness fleets? I think there's a general move 
towards having something that's going to survive a little bit longer. I think part of that is the fear of facing up against an onager that's going to hit you hard across the table right away. And I think when you start looking at the cost, and you know, this is already kind of we talked about this a little bit, but projection experts on peltas, uh, it's a for the cost you can do a lot of damage mitigation and really keep your ships alive. And if you lose a Pelta, it's not the end of the world. It's your main capital ships that you're worried about. And it's kind of like dealing with an interdictor list. You, If you had, the interdictor's cheap enough and you've got a fully loaded Star Destroyer, the ISD is what you want to protect, right? So, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's kind of coming into the meta, but it's, it's going to be one of the types of fleets and archetypes you're going to see. Um, because if you're going to do a tank fleet, you're almost dedicated to doing a tank fleet uh, versus, you know, all the other different archetypes because you really don't have the point allowance to do much more. But again, like everyone's been saying, the idea is to keep your ships on the table longer, maybe prolong the engagement or prevent the engagement from happening until turns four or five. Just that way you can stay on the board longer. And then if you can win with a seven, four or maybe an eight, three, that might be enough. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. H aiming for the seven or eight point um, is very reasonable to carry you forward into um, next day events. So let's now jump over to MSU fleets. And I actually think almost all the factions we have seen recently have MSU fleets. And um, a lot of times they might be slight um, MSU with a large like we see a lot of that with um, Gar and CIS with the large being a Venator or um, Patriot's Fist but the idea is that you have lots of small little units that can just chip damage through and these fleets actually tend to be very good against what we just talked about the tank fleets because they can overheat their defense token suites to try to kill them before they can regenerate up um, do you guys have any thoughts on MSU fleets, or how would you define them in I just, the factions? I just before we get started, we have a, an expansive definition of MSU. It's not literally just you only have multiple small ships. That, I just want <laughs> to be clear. Like that it's, is very it can true. mean more. It can be broader than that. So, uh, I get, well, I, I, my least favorite thing to fly against uh, is like a CR ninety swarm with Akbar, uh, and. Akbar, or like a CR-90 Swarm with the uh, Assault Frigate. Um, you're definitely going to see that there. Some of, somebody's going to be flying it. Um, but, uh, you know, I think those are the, the most famous ones. Or like the MC-30 uh, Swarms. Uh, or like the classic, somebody will bring like seven Hammerheads uh, <laughs> to, to hit at you. Uh, but, I mean, you're right. Like with the Gar, you've got, I think, Ularin with Arcs and Peltas is a, is a really popular list um that hard sell spam from the cis is can be overwhelming again with martuk and then uh, with the empire architect scam uh spam can also be pretty pretty potent especially if they get you lined up um, what do you uh, the, the 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 difficulty of msu is that you can't they they largely can never be tabled right right that you that, you, that they're Whatever fleet you know points that they're giving away, they're getting back more, and and that's the kind of the the magic of, of MSU is that you know they're kind of in control of the points swinging and and they're only going to put out there for you to shoot at what you know if if it if they'll get more back. So it's that's what makes them so good in the tournament scene because um, they're good at scoring points. Yeah. Um, also. In that, like, what you were just saying, like, they can feed you a ship slowly, and you kind of are like, well, I kind of have to shoot at it, because I'm not getting any other options. And it's, like, a terrible option, and because they more than likely will have a activation advantage against you, like, now your ship has to move forward, and now it's going to be plinked to death by um, all these ships. One of, one of my favorite examples is, um, this is right when... Gar was coming out, and I was just like, let's have fun playing a um, like all Venator spat type list. And I went up against um, one of our locals here, Jack, and he had this. He had like the CR70s and um, Peltas, and 
he had intensify firepower. So like he attacked me and like two dice becomes three damage. And I'm like, well, I only have one brace and one redirect. What do I do? Do I just take the three damage and hope the next one's more attacks? And he like hit me with his salvo and every single arc that he attacked me with, it was like three damage, three damage, three damage. And like, after the second one, my tokens were overheated and I'm like, do I discard so I can like brace three damage to two damage? Cause like if I, if I don't do anything, it's just going to plink me to death and then kill me. Um, and he like killed in one round, uh, a Venator from full health down just with these little tiny plink damages that I couldn't do anything in against. And that's one of the strongest things that I think MSU as a whole can do. And then especially if they have like a follow-up ship that then they plink you down and then they can like hit you hard with. Um, that's one of the things you have to take into account. Like you're, you're in their, their web of ships is kind of how I see it. Yeah. MSU players have, have a plan. You know, that that's for sure. They're more than any, probably any other fleet. They got a plan. They're going to stick to it. And they're tough. That's your favorite way to counter it. It's, it's it, situational, I know, but, yeah. you know, it's, MS, are they trying to be first or second player, right? And, a lot of times it doesn't matter. Um, right. MSU fleets, I think, are the fleets out of the ones that we've talked about so far that don't care at all. They'll do whatever is worse for you. That That's that's my take on it. Um my um, biggest uh, game that I've played was at the last round of Gen Con. And I believe, um, is it Jason, right? Yeah. Yes. I, I just don't want to say his name wrong. Uh, Jason, he plays the Akbar um, MC30 with tons of CR90s. And it was the scariest fleet that I could possibly go up against because, like, I get like two shots maybe with a Starhawk and I have like flotillas my fighters aren't going to be able to chase them down and kill them necessarily. And he's just going to plink me to death. And he almost did it. He needed like one more shot of any ship into me and he was going to kill my Starhawk. And it's just plink, 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 plink. And he had a big enough bid that he could go second or first or whatever was more beneficial to him. And then you're just playing his game. Even with him being first player, you're still playing his game because he has so many ships and he has a plan for it. And that. <laughs> So I would hate the hate to say my advice is come up with a plan how to kill MSU, but like MSU is my least favorite um, thing to play against. I would say out of all of these lists, like I feel like tank lists, like okay, I can just try to kill you, and farming lists, it's like I can either deny you the points or try to kill you, and then you have the MSU fleets, and I'm like, uh, how do I counter that? Hopefully, I just don't run into it. That's usually my strategy. <laughs> yeah i usually like i call it the hate maneuver i'll like start at the maximum speed i can and beeline it towards whatever ship's got their admiral on it and then it's just because i mean you can either sit there and box in and take it or you can just reach out and try to destroy them and hope you don't get taken down while moving across the board that way but yeah i, I know Ken, you, it's hard you play um msu style fleets with mc30s a lot how would yeah. you counter yourself I mean, honestly, there's a couple things to consider depending on the type of MSU fleet you're flying. But generally speaking, most of the ships can only take one or two rounds of damage before they're vaporized. And if you're up against a heavy hitting fleet, you focus fire down on one ship at a time, remove it from the board, and then that activation advantage goes away, as does the 20 shots I have instead of, you know, like your five, right? Uh, MSU against MSU is always fascinating because it's like playing two giant fleets up against each other. It's just, you throw a lot less damage. Uh, but I, I think the key here is that MSU fleets love throwing that three damage, which makes you really wonder, do you want to burn your brace on something or not? I like Tater's idea here where it's go after the Admiral, because in a lot of cases, MSU fleets, generally speaking, not always, Generally speaking, the commander is an integral part of how they work. Take, for example, my Kraken MC-30s. Part of what keeps them alive is because I'm moving at speed three or four almost the entire game, and I've got that Kraken obstruction dice. You take out the ship that's got Kraken, I've just lost my entire defensive plan. So in a lot of cases, that could be the way to go about doing it. Or sometimes there's a key ship, uh, but really it's about avoiding the kill boxes, uh, and just don't let them 
get the jump on you. Because, yeah, you're right, John. It doesn't matter if I'm going first or if I'm going second. I can play either way with a lot of MSU fleets because I have the ships to do it. Yeah. Um, I think out of all these types of fleets that we're talking about, MSU would take the most practice to be good at beforehand. And it's just practice, 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 practice. And then you're good at first player and second player more so than anyone else because the ships are so fragile. But if you can use them right, it just kills everything. It, it's also the most exhausting to play 11 games in three days. Yes. Yes. Yep. Maneuverability and learning to be able to eyeball where your ships are going to land and really knowing those speed charts is probably critical to the success of an MSU fleet. Because uh, otherwise you're flying off the board with Raiders at speed four, uh, or even with your MC-30s, you're, they just don't have the maneuverability at certain speeds. Yeah. Okay, so the last major archetype that we're going to touch on, we I don't really know what to call it, so we're just kind of calling it DPS. <laughs> and um, in this category, you will see a lot of things that are designed to put out Unlike the little tiny chip damage of MSU, this is about, actually we could call it Haymaker. DPS Haymaker um, is about dumping a bunch of dice on a target to oversaturate it and kill it. And right now I think the main faction that we see trying to do this is the Imperial faction with things like Onagers or Psy Moons, which you don't see very much, or Kuats or um, an ISD variant like an ISD2. Um, what's your guys' thoughts and faction focus on the, this type of fleet? So I, I still I, I want to throw Patriot's Fist out there as well in there. Um, I think this is the thing that can catch you off guard the most because when they land the Haymaker, it's it's it cripples your lists and and once you start deleting one or two things from your list things break down in your fleet very fast and these are the fleets that are best at doing that um and, and that's kind of what you know kind of what they're trying to do so if you are trying to, to what ken was saying if you are trying to delete akbar or riken or you know sloan you know if you go after them the, the list can break down um now whether you get a shot at that is up to the largely up to the msu player um but yeah, that's that's kind of what I think about when I when I see these haymaker type fleets. Yeah, you just got to be really careful about where you park. You just got to. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna end up anywhere in that medium zone of one of these like, ISD twos or Starhawks or or medium or, or God forbid, close range of an Onager test bed, and you don't have thermal shields, like I mean. The, Flying against these fleets, it's a lot of conscious effort of where am I going to end up after he moves and I move. So you got to be thinking two to three maneuvers ahead. Um, but I mean, it's it's rough, and I think a lot of people, if if you're in the position where you can't fight their ship with your ship, if you're not also a damage. Like you have a squad ball, you just need to send your squadrons um, out to try and hit one of their ships and then skirt around the sides. Uh, and then if they have Jerry, they're gonna they're gonna skirt towards you. But you know that's all scenario based. But I just you know it's just what can you do to not park in that front arc and just you know deprive them of any front shots? And it really it's it sounds really easy to say that, but that's I mean that's really all there is to it that you can to mitigate it maneuverability. Yeah, um, I think another fleet type that you'd see that falls into this is the Gar. Um, spat lists um venators and victories with spats and what makes them scary is they can use their side arcs then so there's less to you have to basically get behind them and if you land in a double arc of like a venator two you get spatted first and then you get a front arc into you that's a lot of damage all at once especially if you are in like the msu style lists um like your ship just gets evaporated um, and then they try to a lot do of it blue the dice. Turn. Right? Yes, a lot of blue yeah. dice. A lot of blue dice going into that side of the CR ninety. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I I feel like each of those kind of counters each other in a way, 
and each of them have bleed off into other categories. That's why, like, I kept trying to think of, like, all these different flea categories. I'm like, they all kind of blend together in the end. Like, you have tank lists that are farming. You have DPS lists that are MSUE. You have MSUE lists that um, are helping their bigger ships tank. So they all kind of blend together. Um, but their purpose is, um, I think, what's kind of driving that. What do you call Radis? Radis is damage, right? DPS? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Um, he goes in. If he dies, he <laughs> dies. Otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> Um, Radis is the quintessential DPS, right? <laughs> we did. We completely forgot about him because <laughs> he's in uh, hyperspace still. <laughs> yeah. Um, the last thing on fighters, um, sorry, last thing on lists and fleets, I want to touch base on our fighters um, and what you would expect when you're looking across the table at certain type of fighter builds. Um, there are like technically four types of fighter builds I see. Um, you have no fighters, which is technically a fighter build. You have light fighters, which I define as being less than 60 points. Um, and it's kind of just a screen to, um, keep the opponent off of you. And if they kill all your fighters, they're at like 59 points. So they don't get the seven, four. And then, you know, your fighters have done your good job of, um, trying to save you. Then you have, um, medium fighters, which is like less than a hundred points, more than 60. So they're, they're, they've come and they've meaning to, play the game but they're not dedicated to it and then anything 100 and above is kind of like that heavy squadron point and i think uh ryan was talking about it a lot of times in that heavy squadron point right now we're seeing double die bombers to maximize how many points um that comes into and like fighters they fall into like they can be with any of the lists like you could have a farming list with fighters. You could have a tank list with fighters. You could have an MSU list with fighters. You could have a DPS list with fighters. Like fighters fit into all of the, those categories. So do you guys have any thoughts of what you're going to see or anything like that on fighter builds? We're probably going to see a Sloan list or two. <laughs> you know, I mean, Sloan I say is that's one of the accurate. Yeah. Uh, Sloan's one of those fun commanders though, where the entire point is your fighters go in to delete tokens, uh, your defense tokens, and then you're just destroyed because you have no defensive capabilities. Um, I think we're going to see a couple fleets that are going to be nothing but rogues. But, you know, I mean, that's this is all standard stuff that we all know. And rogues can be nice and devastating because your ships are concerned with navigating and, you know, concentrating fire and let the squadrons do their squadron stuff. Um, we're going to see at least one Biggs ball. And uh, I think we would be remiss to not mention an Anakin, Ahsoka, Axe, and Kickback combo on the Gar, uh, which seems to be a, a very popular favorite. And hopefully we will see one fleet with Han Solo. Then that's just for Ryan. So. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I, I'll, be, I'll be bringing him myself. He's, this is the best squad in the game. I don't know what to tell you. But uh, he's a double die, double die squad. Yes, um, he is. Yeah, uh, I I think we're actually at a really cool place with fighters right now, and I really thank PDIC for it because it has forced people to just expand. And so you see you see fighters like Hondo, right? Um, that you don't you, you don't see, but people are bringing them for that double die. And so you you counter that you counter those double die bombers by bringing more fighter balls. And so you bring you see a lot of tell, you see a lot of you know, Sienna Ray and, and stuff like that. So we're in this really, within the fleet building meta, we're in a weird squadron countering meta. Um, and so it, it's, 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 we're in a cool, cool place for it. I don't know what to expect, uh, frankly. Yeah, I think there's gonna be a really even spread um, of squadron sizes for everyone but the CIS. I think the CIS <laughs> has got the weakest squadrons in the game. I think you'll see some vultures, right? The TI-99. Yeah, and then... Uh, and then, of course, just deployment advantage. But I think with the Rebels, I tend to see either, you know, Shara and Taisho by themselves or 134 points worth of squad with YT-2400s just falling out of people's ears. Because um, they're rogue and good dice and good health and, you know. Uh, and then I think for the Empire, they got a lot of offer uh, as far as, like, how to build it. And, of course, you're going to see... I think that, I mean, Ahsoka, Anakin, kicking... Uh, what is it? kickback, I don't know, axe, 
that's a great medium. And I think the Empire's equivalent of that is, you know, Jendon, Merrick, Vader, Defender, uh, and Tell. You're going to see that over and over and over. Um, and then for the Rebels, you know, it's, I mean, that I, they just, I think they have a really good, like, a large amount of squadrons, a lot of synergy uh, with, like, Jan Ors and Biggs and Hera. Uh, going to be Ketsu. Going to see a lot of Ketsu. A lot of Ketsu. Annoying. I hate that card. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to put everyone on the spot now. Right now, who do you think has the fight, the strongest fighter, fighter wing in the game? Who goes first? I go first. I'm go saying ahead. it. Anakin, Ahsoka, Kickback, and Axe, if you get the timing right, is the most powerful uh, squadron wing per points, pound for pound. Especially paired. I mean, because once you start pairing with the Ularan or pairing it with the flak that comes out of these rebel, the Republic ships, it's, it's so good. But that's it. That's my, my pick. Ryan, how about yourself? I think Imperials have the best and most varied variation of squad balls coupled with commanders. So whether it be um, Sloan and different variations, um, whether it be six fire sprays, you know, and tell or, or weird, weird stuff, you know, I think they have this, they can hit the hardest um, and they have beefy stuff too. You know, like I think that's what people are really starting to get into is the beefy Imperial Aces and Bosk and Darth Vader and Jendin, you know, or uh, Merrick, you know. So I, I think it's Im imps. Ken, how about yourself? So I'm I'm gonna half agree here with with Garrett on this one, uh, because you do have the your Anakin, Ahsoka, Axe, Kickback mix, but I'm gonna point out that they're all uniques, and that's a lot of points on the table with four squadrons. And there are a couple other builds, think of like a Biggs ball, where it's a lot of generic X-Wings. You can afford to lose one or two X-Wings. You really can't afford to lose an Ahsoka or an Anakin. Uh, so I, I think, you know, this is where the second half of it, I'm going to agree with Ryan. You've got a lot of opportunities in diversity and fleet, or in squadron builds. I think the Imperial Squadron ball has kind of the general edge. Again, going back to what you can do with commanders and what you're... Uh, Imperial squadrons can really do, but I am going to sit there and say that I believe that Gar has the more powerful, compact squadron ball. I think Anakin's the best squadron in the game, hands down. Like okay. by himself, he is. I, I, I do. I do see the. I don't want to skip by the point that Garrett made. Is the flak in the Republic is insane. It is so good. Just you don't. You don't even have to be the Alpha Strike. Right with the Republic right. fighters, you just sit back, you know, fight under your own flak bubble. You will melt anything. I don't care what anybody's bringing. Just sit under your flak bubble. What are they? What? What is it? What is anyone going to do? Yeah, die, die. <laughs> um, I actually, I'm really I would actually say sorry, sorry, John. One, I would actually say don't alpha. Just sit under your flak bubble. <laughs> yeah, like don't that. don't alpha. <laughs> sorry, John. Um, I'm torn between. Um, Gar being the strongest and Rebels. So to be different, I'm going to go with, I, I think Rebels have uh. the strongest fighter package. Um, all of their fighters are versatile and they're like multi-role. Well, most of the other factions have specific fighters for specific things. I feel like you can build a generic-ish Rebel list and it's just good. Especially with like the YT-2400s, like Rogue, Speed 4, Six Hall, four blue dice anti-squad, one black dice um, against squadrons, X-Wings, they have escorts so you can keep your important pieces alive, four blue dice, have synergy with everything. Like, the Rebels synergize so well together. Um, so I, I think it's kind of weird. We all have agreed that, you know, CS are trash and fighters, but, like, all of the different other factions are represented in the fighter builds, and they all can do different things. Um, so there's just going to be, it's an open field for what we're going to see at Worlds. CIS has trash and fighters, but they have the best ships in the game. So I think it's kind yeah, of, it, it, and it the does flak is good. Out. <laughs> they can slap you hard with some of that Mooney red flag. Yes. LTTs. I mean, you're going to get LTT at one Mooney, then the next Mooney. <sighs> oh, sorry, Merrick, you got nuked. Uh, <laughs> no one feels bad for you, Merrick. No. Um, okay, so... 
any last uh, comments on fleet archetypes or what we're going to be seeing at Worlds? <clears throat> no. Okay, so then um, <laughs> we're going to move now on to Commander Prediction Draft. And how we're going to do this is we're going to start with Ryan. He's going to choose a faction and pick a commander that he thinks is going to be the top person or top commander for that faction. And then we're all going to have to pick different commanders to see uh, among ourselves which one of us is going to predict the best commander for each faction. Highest ranked commander at the end of day three. Then we're gonna, yeah, we're going to compare it to the actual world results. So I, I, I'm going to pick Rebels. Okay. I'll go first, and I will take Akbar as my first round selection. Ooh, okay. So let's move over to um, uh, Garrett now. Garrett, what is going to be your top selection for Rebels? Not Rebel? oh. Akbar. I mean, obviously, Agate. Taking it, Agate, all day long, copping out. Right? <laughs> Here's um, here to win. <laughs> my, my guess is going to be. Um, do, is Riken going to be there? Oh, yeah. I, I would say Riken. Riken is going to be the top um, Rebels that's available for me to select at this point. Because I think Ekbar and Agate are going to score higher. But uh, I'll I'll take Riken um, for my pick. Ken, how about yourself? Oh, I'm totally going with uh, General Kraken. I, I think we're going to have an MSU fleet with a couple yeah. MC-30s and uh, some CR-90s that's going to do really well. Someone's going to show up, know what they're doing, and just ruin somebody's day with Kraken. Right. Yeah. Someone's going to win with Radis, you know, and it's just going to be like, oh. <laughs> and, 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 Yeah, yeah, and you're going to sit here, it's like, I always loved Radis. Why didn't I pick him? <laughs> okay, Ken, so now you got the first pick, so you get to choose your faction, oh, a faction that you want, and then what commander in that faction do you want? So I'm going to jump over to uh, CIS, and uh, I I'm actually going to go Dooku with this one. Uh, I think I think we're going to find someone that's going to really sit down and have a plan for Dooku that's going to do really well. That That's my guess. I'm probably wrong. It'll probably be Martuk, but I'm going to go with Dooku. That is uh, that's a I Bears taste. move in, uh, in a number one you, draft pick. You, you know what, though? Like, objectives are strong, you know, and Dooku is the yep. best at objectives. So, if, you, like, if, you, if you show up and they got Dooku and they got a 28-point bid... They got their they're start farm sweating. So hard. Be worried. I'm That's in danger. Thing, no one wants to see Dooku, right? No one wants to see Dooku on the other side. No. Yeah. That's why I say I think someone's going to show up with an idea, and and I'm I just love to see that. Yeah. Okay, Ryan, your second pick in the CIS faction. I'm second pick. Yes. Okay, Martuk all the way. It's going to be, you know, there's going to be 20 CIS players there, and 19 will have Martuk. Except so. for uh, the the player that Ken has playing. Yes, yeah, for the Duku, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, Garrett, on to you. Third pick in CIS faction. Oh, I got the scraps. Uh, I think it's going to be TF one seventy six. I get the scraps. Um, That's true. <laughs> get, take your Kraken and leave. Right? Oh, seriously, right? Like I do. I don't think Trench is going to be making a showing. Um, and uh, who's the other? Grievous. 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 Like the most important Ooh, character man. that they just That's a hard slapped. choice between like the bottom tier for me. Grievous or um or Kraken. I I guess I'll have to go with Kraken. I, I think Kraken will be uh what's left for me at this point. Um John will fly Kraken just to <laughs> just, just to, to I gotta win this somehow. Um, <laughs> Um, and then um, I get to pick um, my next faction, and I'm going to go with the Empire. And I think the top flying Empire list is going to be an Ozil list. Um, he's cheap. He has a lot of control over his movement. He can get around shenanigans with things with people. So do I think he's going to be the most prevalent there no but i think someone's going to do extremely well with an ozil list so ken you get second pick in the imperial faction oh see now this is tough um I, i'm gonna go with with ramadi but i'd rather say grand moff tarkin so <laughs> <laughs> uh 
Ramadi's a good one. I mean, so many people are going to be flying Ramadi. I, I think you're going to – I think we've named already two of the top commanders that we're going to see with the Empire. I've got my ideas on who the other two are, and I'm curious to see uh, uh, what Ryan and Garrett are going to say. Who's got the third pick here, John? To you, to you Ryan. Ah. I feel pretty good about taking Sloan third. Ah. I feel like that's a, <laughs> that's a steal. Third pick for Sloan. I mean, you know good players are taking Sloan for sure, so I feel good. Garrett, to uh, you, fourth pick uh, in the Imperial faction. Um, my brain says Jerry, but my heart says Grand Animal Thrawn. <laughs> so I'm gonna say Thrawn. You're He's gonna go with Thrawn. List. Yeah. Okay. So last faction, the Gar faction. Garrett, you get to kick it off with the number one pick for Gar. Oh, nice. It's gonna be Tarkin. He's Tarkin? gonna spat you to death. Yeah, um, his lists are very, very powerful. I, though, am going to lean into the tank meta, and I think my heart on this, like, part of me, what, is, this is, like, the problem of, like, what I personally think are good commanders versus what I actually think our players are going to show up with. Um, but, like, I think Bale. Bale is so good for the, the Gar in, like, tank lists, and to be able to put out fire, even though I, I think Yularen's going to be more popular there, or Tarkin, my, my heart goes with Bale, so I'm going to just stick with Bale. Then uh, we go over to Ken. <laughs> okay, I'm having, again, tough decisions, because I know what I would pick. Uh, I'm... I think I have to go with Luminara. And I think you're going to have a couple <laughs> people that are that are going to actually leverage Illuminara in terms of being able to keep their ships alive just with the token shenanigans <laughs> you can do with your defense tokens. I, I, yeah, I, I think that's a guy who I was going to pick. I think ES Expert Shield Tech with Luminara is is ripe for being played in this meta, I think. So it's just whoever brings them. Um, who do I got left here? I got uh, Lauren, Plug Plo in. and Kenobi. Oh, okay, Yularen. I think that's that's... Yeah. That's pretty easy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I want to say Lauren's good. Like I, I played a, a Lauren list recently, and the, yeah, um, you know they, our <laughs> fighters are good and making making them even better. So I'm fine. I, I was this close to taking Yularen, but my my heart just has to go with Bale. <laughs> Bale's good too. Yeah. Yeah. Three I would say. I'm sorry. I want to say I think the, the those four admirals for the Republic are all S tier like playable um it's not like the rebels where there's like a couple that's just not very good three or four garmel yeah. this yeah but oh. i think that's interesting i think they're all well balanced outside of Kenobi. Yeah. yeah so for those of you that are watching this on our youtube channel put your draft picks down in the comments and those of you that are listening on the podcast um you can hit us up on pretty much any of the discords and tell us what your um top draft picks for the factions are as well. And we'll roast Waiting for a Palpatine it. list now to win worlds just to like mess with us, you know? Oh, I forgot he was in the game again. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like Pat, a part of me keeps going back to for worlds. Like what if I build a Constantine fleet and no one, no one's prepared for Constantine fleet. Cause how many people raise your hand um, that have prepared to play a Constantine fleet? Uh, Don't even I'm, think about him. Yeah. Ken. It's because I talk I, about them all the time. I'm um, just going to spend 10 minutes reading the card. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> I, I sit down, I'm like, so I'm going to play a Constantine fleet. And the other player goes, Judge, he, delay of game. Like, <laughs> he's slow playing me. <laughs> Unsportsmanlike conduct. Um, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I keep going back. I like terrible commanders, though. Oh. Um, oh, you know what? We didn't mention Screed, but I want to honorably mention Screed. <laughs> yeah. We, we can't, though. We, we only get four. Like, there's That's so many true. decent... decent, uh, decent Darn you, Empire. Um, okay, so any last-minute predictions that you want to make? Go ahead. Uh, I do think we have to mention Morallo. He is the literal boogeyman of Armada. It's a terrible experience. Someone's going to bring him. But, you know, plenty... Of, I think 
three or four people will bring Morallo. Um, and just be prepared, you know. Uh, just be prepared for how to how to deal with it. Think about it. You know, he's he's definitely beatable, but you have to have a plan. Yeah. Um. I don't know if three or four players are going to bring him. I, I I think he will be present, but I don't know if four players are going to try to commit to. I think what is that? That's eleven games. If you go through the world, uh, fifteen games. If you go through, um, the uh, last chance with Morello, that's a lot of Morello. That's a lot of mental space that you're going to have to. Uh, Our only hope. Yeah. Oof. They wear out mentally. <laughs> Game one. Whew, I'm done. <laughs> Can't do the rest. <laughs> um. Yeah, but we have to do mention him. He doesn't really. He kind of fits into. DPS kind of in the list, but he also can farm. So like, there's a lot of uh, places that he fits into our our breakdowns. So, and any final predictions that you guys want to make about the finals of World or the World event as a whole? I think I we will see. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, you go, Ken. Okay. <clears throat> I was going to say I think we're going to see one person who started with last chance qualifier that will make it to day two. Don't know if they'll make it to day three, but I think we'll have one person that'll do well in day two. From Ken LCD. literally just stole the one that I was going to say. So <laughs> You got to come up with another one. Yeah. So you guys go and I'll start thinking. You got one, Garrett? Uh, I don't know. I, I kind of had a fun question. I thought, what piece of plastic do you think will not be present at this event? What is the just the, just the worst squadron or ship in this game that will not be present on any table Ooh, that's a good question and i think 100 percent it's um the imperial aggressor squadron yeah that's mine yeah yeah, yeah. and my, <laughs> my backup was tie phantoms <laughs> sometimes you see tie phantoms with sloan though and they're double dice bombers no not, not, yeah, not bombers but double dice that's true the bell but, yeah. the who the Belva Lab. Oh yeah, <laughs> I was like, "What is that?" Yeah, you might exactly. see a Grievous, right? You yeah, might see you... a Grievous squad, but you will not see a generic Belva Lab. Yeah, I would disagree with you because I think that the anyone that's crazy enough to fly a CIS fighter list would be crazy enough to include it. Out of pure desperation, <laughs> there's got to be a good fighter somewhere in this list. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think, Ken? You're on the spot. I'm going to throw a crazy one out. I think we will only see one fleet with a Rebel Pelta. Okay. I can believe it. Because, you know, there's so many good fleet options with the Rebels. I think we'll see Assault Frigates. I think we'll see MC-80s. But I, I don't think there'll be more than one fleet with a Rebel Pelta. Because if you're going to fly Peltas, you're going to fly Gar. That is true. Gar Peltas are the better Pelta. Right. So there you go. There's my prediction. Love it. My I, prediction... Oh. Go ahead. Uh, my prediction is I think you will see Radis in the top eight. Okay. Didn't pick him so as Ryan, your, you're your top Radis. commander, but you're going to put him in the top eight. I'm not saying I'm not saying what I'm doing, but I think Radis <laughs> in the top eight. <clears throat> Okay, um, let's end with this. Which faction do you think is going to win the whole thing? <clears throat> my brain says the Rebellion, just because statistically they always win. But my heart says probably the CIA. So which one are you picking? Well, the Rebellion. <laughs> the Rebellion. <laughs> I think they're going to win. They always win. I think we're going to find a crafty Imperial player that's going to win. That's my guess. And I don't think it's going to be one of the typical fleets that you see. I think it's going to be something that's got a little bit of jank to it. That's my guess. That's a fair guess. A little, so like Interdictor or something, you know. So, <laughs> uh, I, I think CIS will win. I think they have the best ships in the game. I think of the, of the, of the types of fleets we talked about, objective, DPS, uh, chip damage, they do all of that other you know the best now they don't do squads but um they'll they'll they do all of that the best and i think cis will uh, ultimately win 
I think if more people brought CIS, they would win because they would knock so many people's MOVs out that it, that would, it would throw the whole thing true. out of whack. I, I, I also think I also think CIS has has the ultimate MSU killer in Patriots Fist. Um, and, and there's going to be a lot of MSU. So they'll they'll be ripe for uh, attacking MSU fleets. You, you actually beat it. Beat me to it. I honestly think the CIS is going to win this. And um, it's everything you just said. CIS is really good at flak. They don't necessarily need fighters, which kind of pigeonholes them into like DPS tank style play. Um, but they're really good at focusing down fighters with LTTs and red dice. They have great flak on all their ships. They have almost every ship they have them. They can put point defense ion cannons to counter squadrons. And then they have um, <clears throat> thermal shields to counter ships. And then they're like the best repair um, fleets in the game and, and can play so first gross. and second. That's why I'm leaning toward CS. I don't really necessarily plan on flying it, so I'm not saying I'm going to fly CS and w win the whole thing. But uh, my gut's really leaning toward everything that we're shifting through um, is going to be CIS. Like they're, they're just really peaking, I feel, at this point. I love it. So no one's picking Gar though. <laughs> no, poor Gar. That's just because Garrett and I are not playing. Because if Garrett and I were playing, totally we would make three, day three. You know, hey, instead, if I was playing, I'd bring it to win. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yes, Mark took yep. all the Sorry. whole whole way. The trade. <laughs> okay. Um, then. Uh, Usually we end our episode with uh, Ryan's favorite section, even though I honestly think the draft was my favorite section we've ever done. We need to do more of that. Um, that was also Ryan's idea. He's just really good ideas on how to do fun stuff. We should just do good like ideas, a whole. Man. Yeah. So it's, uh, would you like to launch off the sequence, Ryan? Well, uh, what's the name of the segment, John? Uh, it is What Have You Been Playing? We need a jingle. Yeah. Other podcasts have a jingle. We need to make one. Uh, so I played, um, I was going to get the board game out to show. I played, uh, photosynthesis, which is oh, about yeah. building trees. Um, and it's really fun. It's, you, you have a board and the sun rotates around the board and you try to grow the best tree, um, the best type of species of, of tree. And it's, I haven't figured it out. There's, um, like, I really haven't figured out how to win. It's really, really interesting and plays with your mind in weird ways that I, a board game has not played with uh, my, my mind before. I, I really recommend it. It's a lot of fun. It's very simple. Um, you know, it can be taught to anybody and played in 60 minutes to, to 80 minutes. Really fun. Sounds yeah. fun. I've Is played that, that game, fun? and it was it's great. It's Is this the one where the sun rotates around the board? And Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Your trees, like gain energy and points but you can like shadow the trees and you have to like play it on building it, it's a super simple game on paper and then you start playing and you're like <laughs> strategy blown yeah i'm gonna bring it to adepticon because I, I think it's awesome. that fun nice who's next ken lead us up all right i'll go um really only been playing two games recently outside of armada um, there's a, it's an older game, mechs and minions, where you're moving your little mechs around on the board. And, uh, my wife and I have been enjoying playing that, uh, mostly cause they're kind of cool. I like the guy that's riding the bomb. Um, he's fun. He's got a lot of attitude and I like the programming aspect of it, uh, and how all that works. Uh, so there's one game that I've been working on. The other thing I've been doing a lot solo, I've been, uh, picking up my old war games from the eighties. So the fleet series, uh, and been enjoying the World War III concepts uh, that came out around that time. It's kind of fun to just roll one D6 again and move chits. But, I mean, that's me. We're a family-friendly uh, podcast, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, for myself, I really haven't done any actual board game playing. Um, I've been painting, though. I'm going to count that as playing. So I've been painting some Battletech um, stuff um, recently so <clears throat> um, yeah it's been fun I'm, I'm going to be attempting in the near future my first time putting decals on so pray for me 
because I'm very worried that it's just going to completely kill the model. <laughs> There'll be BattleTech at Adepticon if for anyone who's interested. I know they last year they had a big a big mech out, outside there. Yeah, um, this is actually a really big year for BattleTech at Adepticon. They're announcing their Kickstarter, so they're okay. going to be a big, big BattleTech thing. And then uh, also, I started building a computer. That's not really gaming, but yeah, it's gaming. I, I'm putting pieces together and hoping that I score enough points. Um, so it's it's been a process. I, I love building PCs, but um, honestly, if I could just find a job of me building PCs and then giving it to someone else, I would do that. That's like one of my favorite things is trying to uh, just put them together and tinker with them and like a wire control and everything like that. So is this our soft launch of our own Linus tech team? (laughs) Coming soon, the command stack, I don't know what to call it, operating system. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We're actually building ion radios. Um, (laughs) Be a great brand, actually. (laughs) Actually, we can't do that. There's actually an ion radio, I think, in like Brazil or something like that. Uh, so we, we can't we can, we can do what we're doing. We can't build computers, though. That that would uh, cross some uh, some liability lines. So, um, Garrett, yourself. Uh, oh yeah, so I'm I'm pretty lame. Uh, it's it's like another Star Wars game. Oh, it keeps disappearing. It's that that deck building game that just came out. <clears throat> oh yeah, it's actually. Uh, I mean, it's nothing crazy, but it's actually it's it's simple. The rules are smooth. Um, my wife likes to play it a little bit, which is a huge win. Uh, yeah, it's the biggest right? win you could ask for. If anybody, if anybody's out there, right? So, uh, so yeah, I've just been messing around with that, and then painting Legion minis. What's it? What's the deck building game called? It's called Star Wars: The Deck Building Game. Oh, All right, very original. Great title. Yeah, uh, yeah, from Fantasy Flight. Um, yeah, and then I've been painting a lot of Legion. So we got a little CIS army, it's slowly growing. I just painted some Magna Guards, and they look pretty epic. Have you played another game of Twilight Imperium? Uh, no, no, I've only done two, and I have another one scheduled for April. But I might play one with Ken at Adepticon. I don't know how our times are going to go. So <laughs> we're going to do it while we're streaming, Garrett. You know, I mean, it's going to be. Can't even great. do it while I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> so much, so many things. But yeah, there, that's that's there's. Great. There's my surprise prediction for what's actually going to happen at Worlds. Uh, Garrett, you and I are going to be the only people streaming, uh, presenting during day one, two, and three, because John, Ryan, and Adrian are going to make it to day three, which will be awesome. But, you know, you and I are going to have no voice come Sunday night. <laughs> oh, it's it's, uh, it's going to be fine. Don't worry. We'll horse our way through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. But yeah, guys, that's exciting. Yeah. Um, I can't. We're gonna be all together here in like a week and two days. This will be the second time that all the command stack have gotten together. So I really enjoyed the first time. So hopefully we end the second one still being friends and wanting to get back together, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I, I'm excited for it. Um, we're gonna start wrapping the episode up and telling you where you we can find us. We hope to see some of you guys at uh, Adepticon, so come up to us and say hi. It's going to be a little bit difficult because of um, us being on stream most of the time. So if you catch us out like walking around, um, stop us, um, tell us hi, and uh, we would love to to meet all of you guys. <clears throat> yeah, so you can, you can find us... Um at any of the podcasts uh google apple amazon any of those amazon music um you can uh, spotify uh, as well um and then you can always uh tune in to ion radio the youtube channel and catch catch us in the on the video any last thoughts for everyone before we hit adepticon next week everyone travel safely you know everyone get there safely just come to have fun Right. Don't come to win. Come to have fun, and you'll leave happy. Yeah. Does that, does that work? Ryan's like, no, nah, I'm going to come to win. Happiness is for the weak. <laughs> you can do both. You can do both. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Right. So, thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in, listening, and watching the command stack. Until next time, I'm John. I'm Ken. I'm Garrett. And he's Ryan. I think we lost I'm Ryan. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> and um, we are the command staff, and you've been listening to the command stack. See you next time.